Interest rates have spiked in 2022 to almost 5% in the US and 3.5% in Singapore itself. But you wouldn't even know it if you look at Singapore's red hot property market. New home sales are still going strong and private home prices have increased by 3.2% in the first quarter of 2023. Especially when you talk about those rich Chinese foreigners snap up condos like I go order Cai Peng like that. So what happens? Another round of cooling measures law. According to the picture here, additional buyer stamp duty or ABSD in short, for citizens buying their second property will increase from 17% to 20%. Last year is only 12% le. Then for Singaporeans buying their third or subsequent properties if you are so rich, right? Or PR buying the second property, the rate will jump to 30%. And it's even more exaggerating for foreigners. Okay, the impact is super strong. The tax doubled from 30% to 60% straight. Meaning if you buy a property for $1 million, right? You have to give the government 600000 as Kopi Louis ya. This drastic change in ABSD is a clear signal from the government that property prices are too high already. They just want to make sure that people are prudent in this uncertain economic climate. Or if you are too rich, you can still buy, but just pay the government, the tax will do. Okay, so now let's talk about the impact on the sectors and companies involved. But before that, do help us to like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting stock ideas and learn how to invest for the better. In return, I will show you a financial mimi. Coming back, these ABSD changes are likely to impact three different sectors to varying extents. The first sector that will see a direct impact are definitely the property developers. And we have quite a few in Singapore due to our love for properties. Okay, so these companies are City Developments, Fraser Property, Hobi Land, Capital Land Investment, Oxley Holdings, Hong Kong Land, and more. All right. But while the ABSD is going to have an impact, personally, I would feel that it's going to be pretty manageable for them. Why so? Because if you look at the picture here, unsold private housing stock is now at a 15-year low. And we haven't seen a lot of launches recently because they are also wary of the high interest rate environment as well as they have to contend with high land and building costs. On top of that, okay, these developers are also diversifying beyond just our shores okay, into other countries, China and Australia, and also into other sectors like service apartments, hospitality, and more. Okay, so now let's talk about the second sector, real estate brokerages. And while there are many real estate brokers, the two main listed and prominent ones are APEC Realty and Next. So both these companies are very active in the property launches because of their huge market share. The cooling measures are definitely going to result in lower transaction volumes and value. Okay, and in a quick look at APEC Realty's second half FY 2022 results, it's already showing the impact of the previous round of cooling measures. Their revenue is down 5% and profit after tax is down 28% year on year basis. Hence, it is very likely that this downtrend will continue because of the recent cooling measures, right? And impact the share price accordingly. Now, the third sector that we have is, of course, the banks, right? Because as property purchasers involve the taking up of all these mortgage loans, banks will in, be indirectly affected by the new measures. Housing loans contribute around 20 to 25% for our three local banks, DBS, UOB, and OCBC. Hence, if the housing demand drops significantly, then the banks will experience lesser mortgage loans being taken up and not be able to capitalize on this current high interest rate spread. Okay, so to wrap everything up, my opinion is that the strong past demand from local home buyers 
may temper down as the double whammy of the high interest rates, high mortgage rates, and high government tax will make people like you and me think twice or thrice or many, many times before we want to purchase that property. Okay, personally, I definitely don't want to spend 200000 paying to the government just to buy a small uh, condo at maybe $1 million. It doesn't even give me a four-room uh, condo at current rate, right? Okay, and to top it off, right, interest from foreign investors, like for example, in China, will also come down given that a lot of countries are opening up again and they have more options now. So they don't really have to just stick to Singapore now. So everywhere is, you know, uh, another possible avenue for investment. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful. If yes, I appreciate if you can help us to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel because we'll be talking about more Singapore blue chip stocks like the one over here. Alright, so I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and ciao.